What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by and we're going to continue working on the Bass Tracker restoration project. If you haven't seen the first video that I just posted the other day, go check that out before you watch this one. It shows the beginning of uh, the teardown. It shows how everything comes out. So if you're going to do this to your boat, highly recommend watching that one. But we're going to continue the teardown process today in this video. So where we left off, I had the console all unattached from the floor. It was still sitting in the bottom of the boat, but I ended up having to remove all the carpet to find all the screws that were holding the floor down. And as you can see, it was definitely ready for replacement. But I've got the floor loose now, and I've also removed the two side panels. Right here's one of them down here. And then you can see all the rest of the interior of the boat over here. But everything so far has came out pretty easy. Um, the hardest part was the floor because there was a lot of dirt in the heads of the screws. So I had to dig all the dirt out. And as you can see, a lot of the screws, they broke when you pulled them out. And they were already rusted and broken and everything. So, But otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get this floor out. And then we're going to start on the back deck and get all the carpet off the back deck. So let's get it done. So the floor was very rotten, but I want to try and keep it all in one piece so I can use it as a template when I cut my new piece of plywood. So I'm going to try my hardest not to break it when I'm getting it out of here. Um, I think it'll come out okay, but it's definitely soft over here in the middle. So I'm going to be extra careful. And it's waterlogged, so it's heavy. All right, so it all came out in one piece, as you guys saw. Super, super soft in a lot of spots. I mean, back here by the drain is just crumbling away. So I'm going to let it dry out and then use it as a pattern because it's not just a square piece. So I want to use that for the pattern to cut out my new floor. But then you guys can see all the factory foam, which looks like there's a mouse nest right here at one time. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of this foam and then redo it with closed cell sheet foam. I don't think it has a whole lot of flotation properties left in it anymore. And so we're just going to go ahead and remove all this while we're while we have access to it. But I don't even think it's stuck down. Yeah, it's just laying in there. So it should be super easy. Just clean that up a little bit. And... But the main thing now is on the back deck, I want to get all the carpet removed off of that so we can see how much glue we're working with. So I'm going to have to clean all my tools up and do all that. So let's get started back there. Okay, so here's a good look at the rear deck. It's got the live well, there's two lids there, and then the main engine auxiliary compartment. And the flooring wraps around the front and goes down this vertical wall. And you can see from the factory, they installed the carpet before they installed any of the steering lines or throttle cables. So when I redo mine, I'm gonna start on that side. And when I get over here, I'll just cut a slit between those two holes and there's panels that go over top of it so you will never actually see it so it should work out all right so let's go ahead and get it all removed and we'll see what it looks like
Okay, the carpet is now all removed. And the only thing left is just some little remnants and then the glue. So I'm going to have to sand all that down, clean it all up. You can see I did a little test spot right here. And it actually comes off real good. And these are the two sanders that I'm going to be using. One's just the standard regular round orbital sander. And then the other one is for getting into them tight corners and tight along the edges. And they both work really good. So should be able to do that. Some of it I'm going to have to sand by hand, um, like down around on these small surfaces. But it won't be bad. I think probably an hour on the back deck here. And I'll be able to have all that all cleaned up. But now I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this garbage foam and just see what the hole looks like. The boat doesn't have any leaks. It runs dry all the time. The only water that gets in the bottom of the hole is either rainwater or splash over the gunnel. So, so far it's been an awesome boat as far as that goes. Bilge pump never runs and it's been great. But let's go ahead, get all this foam taken out of here. Get it thrown out in the garbage, and then we'll be ready to start cleaning this up. I'm probably just going to wait so that vertical surface on the front deck there is going to be completely covered because my tackle storage is going to go all the way across to there, and then my rod locker comes out right there. So you won't be able to see any of that. That'll all be internal. So I'm going to leave that carpet as is, um, just for padding for inside of the storage compartment. Keep the tackle boxes from banging around too much, and I think it'll help make it a little quieter too. So the only thing left up front is just the main deck, which is just a piece of plywood. I've had that off before, so I know that'll pop right off. And then this front cover piece, and I've had that off several times um, for doing some wiring stuff, so that pops right off. And both of those will be vinyl, so I'll do those last because I know they're good, they're easy pieces, and they'll come right off. This is what I was more worried about was back in here because I've never really taken any of it apart. So, But as you can see, I probably spent two and a half hours on it today maybe, maybe not even that much, and got all of this all ripped out, and I've been filming, so takes a little bit longer but thanks guys for watching let's go ahead get this foam out and we'll see what the bottom of the hole looks like All right, got all the foam out from that compartment at least. You can see it here and I'm glad I did. Holy cow, that was all just waterlogged, completely saturated. I bet you there's 75 pounds of water and foam over there. So it should lighten up the boat significantly if it's always been that way. And it kind of makes me nervous about the rear because the rear on both sides is just completely full. So both rear on that side over there and then this whole side over here you can see I mean the foam still feels good so I'm not super concerned but if it's completely saturated halfway up that could be a significant amount of weight that's sitting back in here. But I don't think I'm gonna tear into that for this project. But you can see got all the carpet off everything looks good the hole looks awesome it's actually with all the gusseting and strut support struts and everything it's a lot sturdier of a built boat than I thought it would be so I'm happy about that I mean everything's welded c-channel then there's extruded c-channel on the bottom gussets welded in the center so it's definitely sturdy enough But I think that's kind of where I'm going to leave it for today. Um, once this all dries out, I propped it up 
So it's at a pretty steep angle right now, letting the water all run to the back. <clears throat> Once this all dries out, come in here with a shop vac, um, clean all this up, and then I'm gonna buy, oh, it looks like probably I'm gonna need about a sheet or a sheet and a half of closed cell foam. So I'll probably just buy two sheets of that, and then I've gotta buy two sheets of half inch plywood to do the floor and then the front deck. And then I should have all my materials. I'll show you guys the flooring that I bought. I bought it from Defender Marine, defender.com. Not sponsored by them in any way, but this is what I got. And it's, uh, I think, a three mil vinyl. And it's the shark color. So it's kind of a gray and white blend. Should work pretty awesome. It feels great. It's got some texture to it. So <clears throat> the roll is six feet wide and I got it 21 feet long. So hopefully that's enough. Cause I've got to do, oh, it's probably four foot, six foot, another six foot. So 12 and another five. So probably about 17. And I'm thinking about doing all those other panels in it too. So I might have to buy some more. But it actually came real quick. Um, I think it was here in like three days. So not a big deal. It's kind of expensive. So I didn't want to buy too much of it. But I wanted to make sure I had enough to get a good start. Where I can get all these main panels and compartments done. So, But I think that's going to do it for this video guys. The Bass Tracker is going to have a whole new life. The Pro 17, I think it's a 1992. I can't exactly remember. It's a 91 or 92. And so far to me, it's been a great boat. I've actually caught it on fire twice. Um, but that was both times my fault. Well, one time it blew a fuse and it shorted across the fuse back here on the trolling motor battery. So that one wasn't really my fault. But the other time... I had the battery cables setting in the back and they were still hooked up and they shorted out on the hole and ended up melting. But neither time caused much damage. Um, I think the most damage I had was my speedometer hose got melted. So not too bad overall. Other than that, it's been a great boat. Use it all the time, spring, summer, and fall. So, But that's going to do it for this. I'm going to spend some time getting this glue cleaned up, kind of figure out which method works the best, and then that way I can just tell you guys what works the best and you don't have to watch me try 15 different ways and save you a lot of time. So, But thanks for stopping by. If you haven't already, please subscribe. This is going to be a great project. Anyone that's redoing a bass boat, this should apply to you. I'm going to show how to redo all the doors, all the compartments, all the decking, obviously the complete flooring and foam, flotation foam. So stay tuned to the channel. There's more videos to come. Probably going to be a 10 video series to get this whole project done. And then I also bought another Hummingbird Helix 7 side imaging for the console. So I'll run my Helix 5 and I'll use that as Navionics and mapping and then I'll be able to run my graph and side down imaging on the Helix 7 while we're trolling around looking for schools of fish out in deeper water. So it should work pretty slick. And then obviously still have the Helix 7 side imaging up front. And the Helix 7 works great up front uh, mounting to the trolling motor had a few people question about it whether or not I like having side imaging on the trolling motor but I love it it works awesome um, when you're going in a straight line a lot of the lakes around Iowa are smaller so it's trolling motor only and that way when I'm going I'm you know 50 yards from the bank I can see if there's any brush piles or cover or anything between me and the bank or off the opposite side of the boat so it's helped me find a lot of trees um, that were down in the water and you can see the fish sitting on those trees and then 
you just throw a jig and start hammering them. So I've caught a lot of fish just having that mounted to my trolling motor, being able to see the cover. Because it's usually it's pretty muddy water, pretty muddy water and 20 foot deep, so you can't see a ton uh, just visually. So but thanks again. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Uh, the channel's been growing, it's been awesome. We're gonna do this project, and I'm also not done with trapping yet. Still got some more work to do and then do some preparation work for next year. So stay tuned, guys. We'll catch you guys on the next one.